with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of a flinch squad circuit we are in week four and our feature match this week is between as you can see on the screen in front of you Pokemon VGC and Murphy so Pokemon on the bottom of your screen running a team of stack attacker Murkrow, Incineroar and Kyogre and Murphy on the top of your screen running a team of Raichu, Gengar, Kyogre and Cortana obviously because these are replays I can't see the two Pokemon that these trainers have in the back but hopefully we'll see them as we progress through the set here it is a best of three this is the flinch squad circuit ultra series 2020 season and uh, we'll be moving on to the sword and shield series very soon and before we get into this match just a little plug to let you know that this evening over on twitch i will be doing a stream playing some battle spots do come over there the link will be down in the description as always so getting into it here we can see straight away it's going to be a really good match i think we've got kyogre versus kyogre the cartoon are going to play a big role for murphy here um, and the gengar very interesting as well to limit marty's trap uh, uh, switching ability if it is that mega gengar we are going to see gengar and raichu come out for murphy here on the top of your screen and marty going out with the murkrow and the stack of like of course we say the Gengar is going to be a problem for Marty but he does have that Murkrow to shut down that Gengar and threaten it quite heavily with those dark type attacks but it has to be careful for the Raichu those electric type attacks are going to be threatening it at every step of the way as long as it is on the field so we do see the Gengar Mega Evolve turn one fake out coming out from the Raichu into that Murkrow going to break a potential sash there and stop it from setting anything up this turn as we see the Gengar go for a substitute Murkrow flinches and the stack attacker does set up the trick room so the dimension straight away switched in Marty's favor going with both speed control options here which is really smart you know obviously identifying that the fake out could be there so guaranteeing that he's going to get one of these fake out options up we do see the stack attacker move first in this trick room rock slide doing some nice damage breaking the substitute on Gengar and taking the right tube below 50% followed up by a foul play from this Murkrow into the Gengar obviously not doing enough damage though not picking up the knockout there as we do see an on call from the right tube locking that stack attacker probably hoping that to lock it in to the the trick room there but unfortunately not the not the option there but oh not even going for that really nice play here from murphy going for the encore disable combination stack attacker can no longer move so it is trapped on the field and it has no moves it's just going to have to sit here and struggle and murphy making a really nice play here switching in that kyle they're going to be able to threaten both of these targets on marty side of the field very heavily and you know denying his ability to switch we did identify that early on in the match and um, the Murkrow here still threatens the Gengar, but if we see a Protect here from the Gengar, it does give it a little extra room to uh, do something the, the following turn, potentially, and just keep that trap going. We do see the Protect from the Gengar. It is going to stick around for at least one more turn here. The Stack Attack no moves left. It goes for that struggle into the Kyogre. does actually not too bad damage, but taking just as much recoil in the process and a foul play coming out. And Marty identifying that the Gengar going to protect this turn, getting some really valuable damage onto that Kyogre. Stack Attack again has no moves so struggling once again to the Kyogre going to chip itself down and that Kyogre at the same time and a foul play following up is it going to be enough to get this Gengar it is going to be enough to get the Gengar he removes the trap but at the same time he's going to have to face down probably an origin pulse here but it is a scold going for the safer option Murphy going for that scold and removing the stack attacker from the field and uh, things are tied up right now between the two players um, Kyogre obviously taking a lot of damage so Marty bringing his Kyogre onto the field it will Primal Revert and turn into that Primal Kyogre and the Trick Room is still up but Murphy bringing in that Raichu here uh, it will threaten the Kyogre and it does have that active fake out so for at least one turn it is going to be preventing or able to prevent the uh, Kyogre and Marty so the field from attacking can Murkrow maybe sneak a Tailwind in here to uh, play around with the, the the, um, the trick room ending this this turn or the next I think it's this turn I'm pretty sure it's this turn I'm gonna I'm gonna bank on it being this turn because if the, if it is this is a really nice place we do see an ice beam come out from the Kyogre into the Murkrow I'm gonna do super effective damage but not quite enough to take it down as the uh, dimensions do turn back to normal my counting is right and uh, Marty setting himself up perfectly in, a, in a, a tailwind now keeping that speed control going First of all, with that stack attack, and now with the Murkrow, we are going to see a water spout powered out by this Kyogre. We're going to do some huge damage and take down that Cartana in one hit. 
Uh, it is a critical hit on the Cortana, so we're not really going to be able to summarize any item choice there on the Cortana here, other than that it's not sashed. Uh, and a foul play now from the Merkur following up into the Kyogre, taking it down and leaving that lolly Raichu against the world here. And it doesn't look too good because there is still going to be a, a turn of Tailwind here, but um, we do see the forfeit and Marty taking game one. As you can see now, we've got game two on your screen. Uh, the, the things to identify, especially from game one, and I think things that Murphy wants to take on board going into this game two is just how well Marty set his speed control up. You know, like we said in that first turn, he let out with the stack attacker and the Murkrow, knowing that the Raichu possibly could come out with that fake out and deny at least one of those speed controls, but he can't deny both of them. And probably going down the trick room route really helped the stack attacker out there, so probably more favorable for Marty. So I think what Murphy needs to do in, in this turn, uh, in this game, is, is utilize some of his bigger powerhouses, like we are seeing him lead off with the Kyogre here, um, and maybe denying things like the stack attacker is an easy route to get in the trick room up, and maybe utilizing Cortana a little bit better in this matchup. But we do see Marty adjusting slightly here. He's going to lead off with the instant and Rayquaza but rather than just talk about the team preview here we'll get straight into this match so again Marty is going to be on the bottom of your screen Murphy on the top of your screen now it is 1-0 to Marty so uh, the ball's back in Murphy's court he's got to react he's got to make some decisions try and get this set tied up and take it to a game three we are going to see him like we said lead off with that right you and the Kyogre here much more offensive lead and a lead I really do like you do see Marty though just and he does bring that Rayquaza alongside the Incineroar so both players opting for fake out on their sides of the field uh, and the, the Rayquaza uh, it is unchecked so what depending on what variant Marty is running you've got to suspect and Fear maybe a choice band on this sort of build, but uh, obviously Life Orb is another option that you can run, and it will do heavy damage without being checked from Intimidate support from Murphy side of the field. So that Kyogre still in a bit of a vulnerable place right now. Uh, the Raichu probably wants to go for a fake out into the Rayquaza, stop that attacking this turn, and then just hope the Incineroar fakes out into the Kyogre, which it really should do this turn. We do see the Incineroar on Murphy side of the field make an introduction into this game. It is going to get the Intimidate onto both of these physical type attackers on Marty's side of the field which is really useful especially against that Rayquaza um, but you've still got to worry about a potential earth power we did mention life orb being an option there in a Rayquaza so it will threaten that Incineroar if it does carry that option uh, we do see the Rayquaza at Mega Evolve now it does stick around on the field hopefully that Raichu on Murphy's side of the field is just faked out into that slot but we don't see that we see the fake out come out from the incineral into what was the Kyogre slot and an earth power straight away from the Rayquaza it does take the Raichu down to its sash so revealing the item choice there but the Raichu left unchecked and it is going to be able to do something here it is going to throw out a nuzzle we can buy the strong winds but more importantly the paralysis now onto that Rayquaza making it half the speed that it was initially the Raichu doing a really good job there and we did see the life orb on the Rayquaza on Marty's side of the field so good information there from Murphy he does switch the Raichu out now he has an active fake out obviously with the Incineroar so he's going to get his weather control back in on the field and some really nice positioning here from Murphy's doing all the right things faking out into the Rayquaza preventing any big damage there as we do see a U-turn now come out from the Incineroar it is going to be into the Kyogre slot and it'll be interesting to see what Marty brings onto the field now maybe he's on Kyogre and that's what we do see so uh, Kyogre pressuring the Incineroar on, on Marty's side of the field but he does have the option to switch that Incineroar out maybe sack the Raichu maybe thinking well Raichu's done its job now we can protect maybe my Kyogre, get Raichu onto the field, sack that, and then get the Incineroar back out and get another um, Intimidate onto the, the Rayquaza. But we're not going to see any of that. We're just going to see a straight up water spout from this Kyogre on Marty's side of the field. It is going to take the Incineroar down. So Murphy willing to sacrifice that. And uh, the Kyogre going for an Ice Beam. And now out of the Delta Stream, it is going to be super effective onto this Rayquaza and pick up a knockout, especially because of that. Such a valuable. Um, nuzzle onto the Rayquaza earlier in the game. Now we do see the Incineroar come back out onto the field for Marty and the Raichu now come back out onto the field for Murphy. Now, what I did say before was maybe sack the Raichu, but really when you're looking at things now from Murphy's side of the field, he's got more pressure. So I think he made the right choice there with 
taking and letting the Incineroar go down as we see the Raichu go for a fake out into the Kyogre and the Incineroar going for a fake out into the Raichu so leaving the Kyogre unchecked here Marty really risking uh, losing his Incineroar and taking some big damage on his Kyogre but we're not going to see the Water Spout just going to see a Skull and it is enough to actually take down that Incineroar so um, things tied up now as we go into this last turn we uh, both players have two Pokemon left and um, Murphy like we said at the very beginning of the match needs to utilize this Cortana and uh, what a perfect way for him to bring it in now in front of a Kyogre and a Stack Attack and both Pokemon that do not like to see Cortana so we do see the forfeit there from Marty and that ties up the set we're going into game three now you can see both players on your screen again Marty on the bottom of your screen Murphy on the top of your screen this set is tied 1-1 I think this is the first time this season we feature matches going to three games so this is going to be really exciting and it can, it's down to both players I think if Marty brings the Rayquaza in this game and, and avoids the nuzzle and utilizes it a little bit better I think he can do a lot of work with it I think it threatens a lot of Murphy's side of the field so that's the big thing but it's protecting it and making use of it now we do see the type of Coco come out from uh, Marty which is a little bit questionable not see seen as the um, the Raichu here has been out past couple of times and we do know that it is Sash but I guess the option here would be to maybe Dazzling Gleam Earth Power the Raichu uh, but you've got to get around this fake out this first turn that is active right now so he's going to be able to possibly fake out the Rayquaza and um, the Coco doesn't really want to sit in front of the Kyogre and just let it throw out a Scald or a uh, Water Spout but we do see the type of Coco go for Protect and the Rayquaza just protecting as well just to burn this fake out from the Raichu now we do see that into the Rayquaza slot and the Kyogre are going to go for a scald now just preparing for maybe some damage rather than go for the water spout here so um into the protect we do see the rayquaza now go for the mega evolution that'll be interesting to see if the rayquaza actually attacks into the kyogre rather than going into the raichu here because a big dragon ascent here and maybe it doesn't glean damage or uh barium damage if if the type of Coco's got that could be the option of getting rid of the Kyogre um, and once you get rid of the Kyogre it's one of the big powerhouses on Murphy's side of the field so it really makes a big difference now we do see the uh, Dragon Ascent coming out it's not into the Kyogre unfortunately but it is into the Raichu doesn't gleam chipping it down and uh, the double up there more than enough to take this little Raichu down so getting rid of that problem Pokemon and Marty doing a really nice job of avoiding that nuzzle that was such a problem for him to deal with in game one now we do see the ice being thrown from the Kyogre it is going to be on to the top of Coco though not the Rayquaza so whether that was a misclick or not or maybe predicting a switch in there uh, I don't know but uh, just getting some damage onto the top of Coco anyway is very good and the uh, now that the Incineroar support coming in for that Intimidate onto the Rayquaza really helpful here uh, Rayquaza now going to just switch out wants to uh, reset that Intimidate drop for later on in this game and the Kyogre now going to come to the field but the top of Coco really threatening now with that Raichu out of the picture it is going to be able to use its electric type attacks and the uh, the electric terrain is active now the incineral probably wants to fake out into that target and if marty leaves his type of Coco vulnerable here could go down so he needs to be very careful and uh, make use of it um, as this match goes on now we do see the Kyogre come in for Marty Protect coming out from type of Coco just playing it very safe doesn't want to take any risks here as we do see a Skull but no fake out coming out from the Incineroar which is really interesting Skull into the, the Kyogre on Marty's side of the field does pick up the burn there so we'll be chipping down with extra damage and a U-turn into that slot as well just keeping the Incineroar for later on this match for when that Rayquaza comes back onto the field so you can cycle that intimidate once again and the cartana now coming out for Murphy here and a uh, really nice play because it, it instantly threatens this Kyogre and potentially you could predict a Rayquaza switch in on the Kyogre and maybe double in Ice Beam and um, uh, Leap Blip but we're not going to see that the uh, the um, oh, Kyogre switches out for the Murkrow and the Kyogre on Murphy's side switches out for the Incineroar here. So it'll be interesting to see what the Cartana does. Does it have Tailwind? That would be a big player. Does it just attack into this type of Coco now? Tapu Koko going to be the fastest thing in the field goes for a Thunderbolt and it is into the Incineroar leaving this Cortana free to just throw out a big attack here but it is a Leaf Blade into the Murkrow which does and is able to take that quite comfortably because of its flying type attack now Tapu Koko going to protect again because there's active Faker from the Incineroar on Murphy's side of the field as we do see the Incineroar go for that Faker but into the Murkrow here wants to stop any speed control here so a really nice play here from Murphy as we do see a Smart Strike into that Murkrow slot and it will be 
potentially enough and it is enough to take the Murko down here that's mod strike and granting that Cortana one of those tasty attack beast boosts so it's attack going up to plus one here and uh, becoming a big threat but Rayquaza now entering the field and one of the things that you really want to have on your side of the field if you are facing down against a Cortana is definitely a Rayquaza. Earth power here going to be enough to probably pick up the knockout especially with the um, the life orb as we do see the Tapu Koko go for a Volt Switch into the Incineroar and I think you go for the the, um, the Earth Power because you don't want to take any additional drops that could weaken Rayquaza going forward in this match and uh, knowing how weak Cartana is on its special side I think you're you're pretty free to, to know that you can go for that attack here but we are going to see the Dragon Ascent launched into this Cartana just wants to make sure maybe unsure that the Earth Power would get it there but uh, Dragon Ascent is more than enough to get this Cartana uh, requires that outspeeding Cartana naturally as well being able to pick that off and that gives total protection for the Kyogre now Marty in a perfect position to uh, just close this one out we do see the Kyogre on Marty side of the field take a little bit of chip damage from that burn and the Kyogre again finally come back onto the field for Murphy now it's still got a good chunk of health so um, if you can potentially take a Dragon Ascent here uh, you can get rid of the Rayquaza, but then you're really stuck for answers to get rid of the Kyogre on, um, on, on uh, Marty's side of the field, which is a little bit of a shame now. Kyogre does take the Dragon Ascent, a big chunk of damage at the same time. The Skull coming out from Marty's Kyogre into the Incineroar, and... Uh, oof. Could have sc well, no, the game's over here for Murphy, unfortunately. Marty's managed this very well as an Ice Beam comes out from the Kyogre. Murphy said the field into the Rayquaza. Going to be enough to pick up the knockout, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think he's really... Murphy's got the answers to deal with the Kyogre, even though it is very, very chipped down. It is going to be the slower thing on the field, and then especially with Tapu Koko coming back onto the field for Marty, this is going to be a clean sweep for him. So, very good set. Marty picking up the win this week against Murphy. Murphy, but a uh, great showing from both players and um, we do see the Tapu Koko wrap this one up and uh, the Kyogre don't go down there for Murphy but like I say great showing from both players um, really nice to feature these players because we haven't featured them yet this season and um, well a uh, really nice way for us to end week four now we will be going into week five next week and then taking a little break after that before moving into the the top cut of the tournament we will review the bracket after next week's match we will see who the top cut players are moving forward in the tournament and we'll have a look at the standing as well after the swiss round so i hope you've enjoyed today's episode my friends thank you so much for tuning in as always do leave a like on the video if you do enjoy this sort of content and make sure to subscribe to the channel because we have a boatload of pokemon content coming out for you very soon with sword and shield on the horizon and uh, i will see you all for another episode next week so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye